all you loyal fans, <laughs> you'll be most disappointed because I've weakened and joined the modern beekeeping society and bought myself an uncapping tinny box thing. But I'm not really sure. What do I usually say? Could be good, could be shit, but we'll find out shortly. Talking about could be good, could be shit, we've sold a lot of those coffee mugs to people working in offices, but I'm not really sure what feedback you get at the table. Like, you know, what do your office mates say? Yeah, I would, I would like if you just if you're getting bored, well you're not getting bored. If you get if you want to, it'd be rather cool. Just on the Facebook page, just like some of the funny comments that your workmates are making about them coffee mugs, and kudos to you for buying them because I reckon that's good fun. I've got a couple in my cupboard. No, no, they're good actually, aren't they? The great unveiling. Not quite as exciting as landing on Mars, but still, you know, critical. <laughs> no, it's got a scratch already. Bloody hell, Harry! <sighs> Carry away. Oh, shit, I can see myself. Oh my god. I wonder back in the day whether that was a mirror, like shiny bit of tin. I think it was. I think it was brass, though, they used to shine up and stick on the wall. And if you go there, you're a bit of everybody. You're really small. And you've rust your lips. Look. Oh, look like a bit of an asshole. Nothing new? No, no, thank you very much. I thought you'd say that. Enough fool arsing around. Uh, so we'll put that over here. Right, let's see what we've got here. Yeah, that, that's their attempt at an oven rack. I might have to, I might have to actually get my real oven rack out because I mean that looks a bit. You know, but anyway, I think that's going to be the wrong way for our honey pour, isn't it? That's going to be the problem. Because that's going to have to sit there instead of like that. Uh, put up Doctor Smith. Right, now what else have we got in here? Oh, God! Well, that comes with a long honey tap. I bought some cheap ass honey taps. Anybody out there in internet land, not to get a bit of a heads up from the bush bee man, don't buy shit cheap bloody honey taps, they're crap. Waste 20 bucks and get a proper one. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Because the cheap ass version, this bloody O ring doesn't seal. Of course, that's the only thing that seals the bloody thing, isn't it? That friggin' O ring. So, if you manage not to screw up and cut your hole the wrong size, your shit will drip out the front anyway, so, yes. Waste 25 bucks and buy a proper tap. We'll get real excited and buy a metal one, but, whew, I don't know, they're even too miserable to give me one of them in here. Everything's so shiny and new. How long do you think it'll last? Probably about until this afternoon. <laughs> it might stay shiny for a day if we're really lucky. Probably until we use it. Maybe we'd be able to get it clean after, you reckon? That was a bit lucky it didn't fall over. And we have the... This is a bit... I didn't understand this part, because this is the... This is the drip tray bit. But... You would think the bloody drip tray would be dangling in outer space, or these hooks would hold it up, or something, but... I suppose it's got little these little funny little legs. But I would have liked it to have been a bit in the air a bit. Anyway, I'm sure the bush bee man will bastardise this thing somehow. I'm guessing it's got to be that far down because the frames will have to dangle in there. We might find a frame and see what happens. Surprisingly, as a beekeeper, I just happen to have a bee frame laying around the place. Oh, let's have a look here. Yeah, see, there you go. That's where you could do the thingamajigamajig. But it still doesn't need to be that low. Anyway, so I'm assuming you do the plugging off and you... Hang your frame there before you put it in your machinery dip. The honey extractor for all the professional people out there. <laughs> Not the thing in me dick. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, that's a big pot. What? Hello. <laughs> uh oh. We want to make sure we put the bloody thing in the right way around, don't we? So we can push it easy. Anyway, here we go. This is the joys of the internet. As you would know, it's nearly as much fun as when a jar of my honey turns up across the world. <laughs> yeah. Have you read the instructions? No, did it come with any? I haven't seen any instructions yet. Can't be that fucking hard, surely. It's only got, no. I mean, it's only got two options. I can go there, or go there. All right. Oh, shut up, you. Might be a bit short one in this one, I think.
I think maybe we'll have to stand in a hole. Ah, oh, well, anyway, if the silly bloody thing works, we'll put it on some other bench. Oh, I'm assuming the rubber seal one goes on the inside of the pot. We're going to put our split wash. Hey! No! God damn it! <laughs> Put our split washer and then our flat. No, actually, wrong way around. Put the flat washer in your split washer and then the nut. Yeah, I know, the nut's putting it together, but just don't have to say that. I might just go and find myself a screwing up device. Or well, for all those all professional folk out there, it's probably called a spanner. You're probably going to have to stand in a hole when you do the uncapping. Well, you won't get to do the uncapping anyway, because I'll have you carrying the heavy pots in because all your big muscles. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, come on. Ah. <laughs> ah, you see now, lad? That could be the trick. That could be a little bit of mischief making. Then we're going to do it that way then. So the, yeah, that looks. I reckon that looks nicer with the fold on the up there. Where are the directions? He says. I don't. We got it. We might put the tap in while we've got it up here. Otherwise, I only have to turn it around again to do that. My professional honey tap spanner. <laughs> Very high tech here at a bush bee camp. Just noticed that it could be an interesting fault with this. It's not quite going to drain out of there real good, is it? So all you professional beekeepers out there that are laughing at me just at this particular moment in time, who have probably done this already, it'll be okay. Just thinking about that silly bloody tap. I wonder if it would matter if I had no tap. And just had the bucket under there anyway, so because I mean it's not going to be super duper sealed, is it? Like, yeah, I guess I could throw a little bit of some sort of plastic cardboard in there or something to seal it off if I really wanted to get excited. Because that's going to be a pain in the ass. It's going to be like three inches of sticky muck stuck to the bottom of me tub. I guess it'd only be if you wanted to change the bucket over. They got a little bit motivated and made a crease here, so. That have, they're having a slight fantasy that the honey will run. <laughs> so, but shit. Ah, anyway, we'll work that out. It'd be a bloody nuisance if we leave it in there. The upside to it is we'll have another tap. But that's not the reason why I'm thinking about taking it out. I'm just thinking, you know, you'll be in there trying to tip the bloody thing up to try and roll the honey out. I suppose you'd be in there with a scraper to push it over the lip, but it's sort of defeating the purpose a little bit, isn't it? This isn't quite the right stick for this job, but if you get the right size stick, you can just slide it in there like your proper spanner and just do up your taps nice and easy. Come on. Anyway, if you're only doing up a few honey taps, that'll save you a whole lot of stuff around to trying to figure out how you're going to hold that in there. So we're going to put this bit in. It's a bit flimsy ass, this is. But anyway. Get the get the jig. Well, I'm assuming. Don't know for sure, but I'm assuming. That'd be f***ing stupid. Like it's already short. Imagine if you had to bloody put the. Would you go like that? What the hell? Is it, well, I suppose that'd be alright if we weren't using a honey paw. But now that we've changed direction and we've got something more cool. So that'd be just for a knife, wouldn't it? That might work, because then you're supposed to go... We were supposed to go that way, weren't we? Or that way. We're supposed to go that way. If we put it at that end... Like that. And then put them in there. 
So that, then that would be a bit weird ass, wouldn't it? If you're standing there. Then what would you? How'd you get on? This. Imagine this is full of honey. <laughs> Nearly! <laughs> I think we need a drill. Oh! Anyway, we'll put a little dot. A little black dot. And a little bit in a bit. How'd the bloke been that? Ah, oh, God. So we'll try a smaller drill first. <laughs> oh, that. It's a bit tricky to get, isn't it? <laughs> I reckon we could go like that. Do it a lot quicker with an automatic decapper, but lots on the list. Once you've got honey and stuff dripping everywhere you should be able to take it with that hand and pop it into there so it can wait for the extraction that should work i think <laughs> marvelous what it needs is a handle and you think it's a barbie <laughs> anyway that's enough of that for today well here we are on blustery point trying not to get blown over just thought i'd show you honey harvest from beginning to end because apparently people would like to see that but before we do that i'd like to show you my crazy idea yesterday here it was 45 in the shade and so i come down and i put a little bit of silver paper over top of the girls to try and keep them safe it was that bloody hot the other day i thought i might try and protect the ladies a little bit but i don't know whether it was a good idea or not oh it's like Christmas time all the year round here in the beekeeping world. Check this out. I even bought myself my own present. I got myself a smoker box. So I thought I might keep me dad's smoker a bit safe in this box. Mind you, there's been some concern that the box will only last a week or two before I bloody run over it or see something stupid to it. So you never know. If you only ever see this smoking box once, it was probably a short term thing. So I found myself some metho from another past life and I thought um, maybe we could pour some metho on our hessian to get it cranking along. Like our mate Wild Bill with his pine needles. I thought, well, I don't know, is that multi-purposing? <laughs> I've got it all over my fingers. <laughs> now I've got it all over my bee suit, so if I actually burst into flames, it was nice knowing you. Thanks for coming along on the Bush Bee Company's journey. Oh, there we go, we're on! I think I should have actually poured my metho on there and actually put it in upside down, so... But, I don't know, maybe that's kind of cool. Shit, do you reckon I should turn it over or should I leave it the wrong way up? Oh, come on of there. Oh, here we go, here we go. Ooh, we've got our own little chimney. <laughs> chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim... We need a little car. So we thought we'd just take the um, capped red gum honey, pop it in the back of the ute and take that home and spin it out and then bring the same frames back here and so then the ladies can just rebuild it all again. So I reckon we've got about two frames in here that we can harvest. the girls will fly out. So if you're wondering what we're actually looking for, we want a nice capped frame of honey like that. So all the, all the caps are on, and then that basically means your honey's ready to rock. 
So then she's nice and ripe, ready to rock and roll. Bit of red gum Mally honey on your toast in the morning. Mm -mm -mm. Well, now there's a puzzlement for you. Not necessarily more bees means more honey. Now these girls here have only got the normal brood box and one super. And there's not as big a population, but check this shit out. This whole super looks like it's pretty much full of honey. So, and it's nice and right. Probably all you old time beekeepers out there already know all this, but anyway, it's an interesting little discovery. This here developing a new business is a rather interesting little trip, isn't it? I was reading the fact that honey is a class three food, so you have to have it in stainless steel containers in, in a sealed area. I thought, well, I've got a got an old beach tent here and I'm gonna put it up to keep my girls out because I don't want the bees here eating these honey because last time I did this, I had bloody honey bees everywhere. So I thought, even though today's ended up a bit crap weather-wise, I thought, well, well, I put them in here and it's supposed to, you're supposed to be able to wash the walls down, but I figure I can just fold the walls up, so that could work. <laughs> anyway, we've only got a little bit of stuff here going on, so we'll have a bit of a crack, keep the girls on the outside, keep the sweet stuff on the inside, and we'll be all good. Stop it. Oh, God. I'm you, got ruined here, right? Go on with that, is that too full or something? <laughs> Why is it doing that? that? Stupid thing. Now I'm going to be in a puddle. Water and electricity, there's a recipe for disaster. We'll let it bubble away for a minute and see if it calms down. I said, it's no wonder my poor mum can't sleep at night, is it? You know, when we were catching that swarm in the box, dangling on a ladder, and I was jumping up and down to try and knock them out of the tree. My poor mother was watching that episode and she bailed me up and says, if you ever do that again, I'm gonna write you out of the will, you stupid bush bee man. Sounds like someone's been eating too many beans back here. <laughs> just as a footnote, it's not me. I'm just, just Mr. Hose in the bucket's going crazy. I don't know what's going on. Right, here we go. Oh, we got our, look at this, we're getting all flash in here. <laughs> Hopefully we're getting all flash, I don't know. I'm still persisting with my honey pour. I reckon that's pretty cool. Hence the reason why we've got the farting going in in the background. Oh. People must love a honey extraction because I think the honey pour has had the most views out of anybody. So that's pretty cool. So we've, we've probably been a, ended up being an advocate for these dudes. Although, I know we picked this up from the hive works down in the city. Oh, look out. That's not good. <laughs> We might have to wire that down, I think. Oh, don't do that! I'm going to have to put something on that. That's going to annoy the shit out of me. Isn't it? That's going to be bloody unacceptable! I might have to get my oven rack back out. My dear departed dad used to say, two heads are better than one, even if one head is a donkey. So... Just in this conversation, by the way, I think I'm the donkey. I was always the donkey, even when he was giving me shit. So, anyway, the lads come up with a good idea with a bit of wire around there, and on we go for honey o. Look how neat yours is. <laughs> neat work, Dad. Bloody younger generation, uh, just always gotta be aesthetically pleasing. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know when you will off, lad. Now on the advert they say that these um, honey pores are easier for the ladies to reconstruct but when you look at this you think holy shit we're making a mess but when you put them back in their, oh, in their hive they do they just clean it all up and next thing you know they don't have to hardly make any new honeycomb so they're they're not full of shit after all that's it that's a load! That'll be a load, I said! <laughs> B 
being a bit old school here, we're a bit primitive or small scale. So we've got the turn them around. The old, there were some really old cool ones that you could actually have swing baskets. So the baskets would swing around, but then you can't get as many frames in your, in your extractor, of course. So this is a bit, you know, you can get ones, obviously then the frames sit like this, and then they, you don't have to turn them because they're spinning and you can get a lot more frames in. But of course they're more expensive. The one I really want to get, if I ever get that far, is ones that sort of spin this way. And then you don't have to lift the frames in and out at all. But hell, that might be a, that might be a little bit far away. Have all seen? There might be a lot of honey between here and there. <laughs> I thought this was a good idea because at least we can sort of let these drip. I had them in a pot before, as you probably remember from my first honey pour episode. I had them in a little plastic container. But I thought, well, this might be a little bit more together, so I just have to wash one thing afterwards. But anyway. I'll let you know. Well, you'll know anyway because you're watching me right now. Finding out together we are. Da -da -da. Oh, look at that. The ladies have got something fresh to play with. That works pretty good, doesn't it? I think that's the go, don't bugger eyes around and wait for tomorrow. <laughs> They're all, all in the same day, although well, that one's a bit sticky. Might be a very rare item this year, bloody river red gum, Murray river red gum honey. There's only a little bit of it going around. So, whoo -wee. Anyway, you never know. Be quick, you might be of that bloody honeycomb circle business. You might have to get online real quick and get hold of this stuff. Might be all gone before we start. Christmas belly going on from her young cooking. So I've got myself a bit more of a bottling bench here going on and I've got all the pots stored up in the sealed up container. So well that was a bit snazzy. The wife helped me do that the other day so she loves me a little bit still. <laughs> anyway we'll jar up a bit of honey and send a bit off. And we've got the stickers in this drawer at the top which is kind of cool. I'm going to have to order some more of those ones because they're Getting a bit short, the kilo ones. What's in this packet? Oh, I've got a couple left. Another project. Golly gosh. Anyway, here's the sticker application bench. Tell you what, <laughs> things are a bit primitive here. I guess if I had an application machine, at least that'd be square, wouldn't it? Going on my track record, of course. I don't know that I'm still, I'm actually still allowed to put stickers on the pot, but only just. <laughs> so if you get a crooked sticker on your honey pail, just realise it was done with love, even if it is a bit wonky donk. And go around right here and put it on the scales. It smells like honey. <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> One thing about this primitive system, I usually air on the generous side of the weight. Well, that 
was a bit of a challenge, wasn't it? All that effort for a bit of river red gum honey. But it's going to be in short supply this year, so if you want to click over to the website, grab yourself some, you better be quick, because it'll be gone before we know it. But hell, it's yum though.